Now, if you think about it, a spider web is designed to stop a fly, speeding at high speed, catch him, freeze him in flight. To us, that doesn't seem like any great feat. A fly just weighs a little bit. But think about the size of the fly and the weight of the fly compared to the fiber that caught him in mid-flight and freezes him. A spider has been designed by evolution to create a web that can actually stop a missile in mid-flight. There are certain silks produced by spiders that are so incredibly strong, so incredibly flexible. This has been exciting to, to material scientists since they first did the calculations to see what the strength to weight ratios were. It was off the scale. It was incredible. But there was no known way to produce this material in industrial quantities. It was a dream of industry and even of the military to have large quantities of this material, but there was no known way to produce it. If we can make a, a, a fiber that's as strong as spider silk, it's obviously has, um, it obviously has a great deal of potential in medical applications, whether it be for suturing, whether it be for um, uh, bandages uh, that, can, that can foster wound healing, whether it be for um, uh, scaffolds to grow new tissues on. And then there's, of course, the use of the ultra-strong fabrics. We can make a fabric uh, like Kevlar or fiberglass out of this, and it'll be stronger, and uh, so you, you have more lightweight and more strong uh, structural fabrics that can be used for boats, airplanes, canoes, uh, golf clubs, perhaps. So there's, there's a huge number of potential applications here. Our concept and our first real major test of this concept to use genetic engineering for the material sciences was to reproduce this holy grail material. And we were going to do it in the silkworm by taking spider DNA, this particular sequence of DNA that tells a spider how to make that silk protein, and incorporate it into the silkworm in such a way that the silk, that the silk protein would be expressed in the silk fiber and add strength and flexibility to that silk fiber. Of course, there's a commercial silkworm industry in many Asian countries, and that industry uh, is fairly automated. Um, and and uh, uh, if you take spider silk uh, and, and engineer silkworms to make that silk, then uh, this, the commercializable properties of the silkworm themselves allow you to make commercial quantities of spider silk. To understand the complexities of this, it doesn't do us any good to introduce a gene sequence for a spider into a silkworm and cause the silkworm to produce spider silk proteins in its knee or in its head. It needs to produce them in its silk glands and they need to be produced in such a way that that protein can combine into the fiber and can add significant strength and flexibility and perhaps other mechanical properties to that fiber. And that's exactly what we mapped out that very first day on Dr. Frazier's desk. Not how to take DNA and put it into a, into a silkworm, but how to do it in a specific way that would reach these specific results. We focused on making a protein that doesn't really exist in nature, but incorporates the best properties of the silkworm silk and the spider silk. And uh, so it's basically, it's a chimeric protein that we get out of here. It's not native spider silk. Uh, so it's a manufactured uh, biomaterial. Other people have tried to express full length spider silk in silkworms with varying degrees of success, but there's no evidence that that particular fiber, that particular protein actually becomes a uh, composition of the fiber. Uh, it may be stuck to the fiber, uh, and, uh, but it's not actually uh, intimately involved in the structure of the crystal of the fiber itself. In our case, uh, the way that we have uh, engineered this, this protein, it actually does become part of the uh, crystal structure of the fiber. The material that we've been targeting, this spider silk, is incredible. It's incredibly flexible. It's uh, capable of absorbing uh, large amounts of energy. Uh, there is absolutely no doubt that the properties of the silk are what we say they are. These, these silk fibers were sent off to a commercial analysis lab in Korea 
where they analyze commercial uh, silks and uh, they did these uh, analyses blind and found that our silk was stronger than anything that they had ever seen before. In fact, they wanted to know what it was because they'd never seen a silk with these kinds of properties. It's thinner, it's smoother, and it's stronger. What we are trying to accomplish is something that much larger organizations, much more powerful organizations have failed to achieve. And so I completely understand when someone looks at Little Craig Labs and wonders, Could, do these guys think they can really do this? It's absolutely real and it's all happening here at Craig Labs.